Howdy. Uh, it's rainy. <laughs> and I thought today was going to be a real crappy day, but it has turned out to be an awesome day for three reasons. Let me tell you why. I woke up early and went fishing. And before the thunderstorms moved in, I hooked into a stud of a redfish. I cut a real nice red. That's number one. Number two, the picket fence is done. I'm going to do a video on the picket fence and some of the challenges. And we had to make a whole bunch of changes and custom configurations. Hand built, 100% from stick built picket fence. It looks gorgeous. Hit subscribe because I'm going to do the video. Number three, uh, I was out fishing and I got a text from my son. And as you guys know, he's been helping me out around the house because he's uh, been applying to law school. And he got a text today and he got accepted to law school without having to take the LSAT, which is the law school test, just based on his um, scholar grades and everything for the university already. So that was fantastic news. So we're thrilled. So he'll be working for me again at the house, you know, all the way through the next year. And then he'll start law school and he'll work part time. So I'm excited. So anyways, uh, let's get going, and today's video is uh, overseeding. Kind of a strange project, so hold on. So here's the question. Should you overseed your warm season lawn? That's a question I get all the time. I'm gonna answer it today. I'm gonna give you some warnings, I'll give you some tips. We'll go over a couple of different things, so hold on. So it is picket fence day. And today, all the posts are going in. Even though it's raining, we're getting them in. Yes, it is picket fence day. So the guys are out front, Kurt, my fence guy, who built this fence back here. He's coming in, he's hand building a custom wood picket fence. We canceled the vinyl one we had. It's been back order for three months. I'm done with that. So we're gonna hand build custom wood fence and I'll put that up on video, hit subscribe. Next. A lot of what I'm talking about is actually in the Bermuda Lawn Guide, so get the Bermuda Lawn Guide. It's free in the description below. I'll link to it and any product I'm talking about. But it's a question I get a lot. Should I overseed my warm season lawn? My answer to most people is, is no. Just leave it alone. Why is that? Well, number one, you get into competition problems in the spring. So your warm season grass is gonna be growing and you want your Bermuda to go and they're gonna compete with each other. And typically you might have to spray some kind of product on it that might have a little bit of negative effect. Also, in the fall, if you're gonna be planting a warm season grass or excuse me, an overseed grass like an annual perennial rye, you really can't be aggressive with your pre-emergent. So that's another issue you need to look at. So my answer to you is for the majority of people, do not overseed. Let your lawn go to sleep, your Bermuda or warm season grass, go to sleep, take a break, <laughs> put down some humichar, put down some, start putting down humichar, fix your soil pH during the winter and get ready for the spring. That's pretty much it. I don't like to overseed. Now last year I did a strip, I did a test strip for you guys on overseeding um, on the fairway. And it came out looking great. The problem is, is that had a bunch of weed seed in it. We struggled to kill off that weed and it hurt that Bermuda back there and it still hasn't fully recovered. Almost what, eight months later? So my answer to you is you're taking a risk when you oversee. If you have done it in the past and you know how to do it and you don't have a problem with it, then go ahead and oversee. But otherwise, I don't recommend it. Let's talk about what I'm doing back here. This is a unique little area on the back. Now the front, we brought in dirt, we planted zoysia seed, and I disproved the theory that it takes two to three years to establish a zoysia lawn. Four months, that front lawn, four months, and it looks gorgeous. Did the same thing back here, but it doesn't get a lot of sun. There's a lot of shade back here. And I really don't care what I do here. I can sort of experiment and play with this. So here's what I'm gonna do. I was at the hardware store getting some plumbing, and I found this. Now this is Dent Shade Mix. Four different types of grasses. There's three different fescues and there's a little bit of Kentucky bluegrass. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna put this down. I'm gonna do an overseed, a fescue overseed. And I'm gonna get my scarifier, I'm gonna scarify it up and we're gonna plant that back here. Mainly because the girls come back here, they pee and they poo and it's just we don't want it to be a muddy mess. So I really don't care what kind of grass I have back here. But the winters down here are really mild. I'll still be 60 degrees in December down here and I'll probably still have some kind of fescue or Kentucky growing back here. 
it'll be just fun. We'll play with it. We'll see what happens. So that's what I'm doing. All my lawns right now, the only thing I'm putting down is green chalker, by the way. That's it. Green chalker in the fall is what you should be putting down. And in the spring for jump start, most of you will be using the, the green chalker as well, too. Oh, so let's talk a little bit about the weather. And if you plan to do any kind of overseeding to your lawn this fall, or even in the spring, let's talk about how the weather conditions are gonna impact you. You really need to focus on your 10 day forecast. Fence cut. <laughs> and what do I mean by that? I've got four days of rain and thunderstorms right now. It's not a good time to be doing an overseed. Why is that? It's because you can have washout. So in other words, you can have seed wash out from one area and heavily accumulate, accumulate in another. If you're going to do any kind of overseeding, and I really want you to look at your weather forecast and look for a period of dry. So you're gonna have four or five days where you're not gonna have any rain. It works out really well. So let's say as an example, I've got three days of rain right now, and then I've got five days of no rain. Well, my soil is gonna be nice and moist. I'm gonna come out here, I'm gonna throw down my seed, I can put down a little bit of fertilizer or whatever I want to put down. I'm going to scarify it and then let it sit. Why do I scarify? Because it puts the seed anywhere from an eighth of an inch to a half an inch in the ground. In case I do get a heavy rain, it definitely helps hold it in. So make sure, put your seed down, scarify it, work it into the soil a little bit, and you're pretty much done. If you want to put down anything like... Uh, additional soil you put that down first then put your seed that's what we did out front we brought in our soil we leveled it out i did my treatments i put down the seed and i ran the scarifier over it and got it down in the soil and that's what's made that turn out so well try this again so we've had two days of rain good rains last night the last rain was about midnight or one o'clock and it was a heavy heavy downpour my lawn back here is soaking wet which is great because it does a couple of things Number one, I'm able to walk through here and I've got some crab and goose grass, probably Dallas, I got a mix. So I can just go through here and I can actually pull them up. So I'm going through here and I'm just pulling up all these weeds back here before I actually get started, which I'm not really too concerned about. But I'm gonna get up as many as I can and uh, that'll just, Save me a little work. I'm gonna throw out my seed. This is the seed I talked about. The dense shade mix. The pool pump is running if you hear a noise. At least I don't have those damn cicadas and frogs today. But I'm gonna show you. <clears throat> That's a seed mix. So around the edges, I've hit this very heavy with the seed. You can see it. And then moderate in the middle. I've just learned that edges don't like to grab seed that much. And then I've got my Sunjo here and I've got my Scarfire blades on. One little note, someone asked why I taped this closed. It's because I have so many rocks and shells back here, this plate can kick out. So there's the blades on there. So I tape this closed, actually, so it doesn't save my legs. So if you have established grass, you can put down one coat of seed, do a scarify, and then leave it. If you're putting in new grass, Put a light coat of seed down, scarify it, put another coat of seed down, and then scarify the other way. <laughs> Double scarify it. But I think, you can see what I'm doing here, is I'm just stirring it up and I'm leaving all this on top here. All that grass and thatch and everything, I'm just gonna leave it on top. And that'll be perfect to get this seed to germinate. I'll come by with a hose, I'll blow the seed in, and pretty much done. Ooh, man. So this is a nice rain. Look at that zoysia lawn. Now that zoysia lawn is just over four months old. Look at that. You can see the new picket fence. 
and I'll be doing a full video showing you how you guys can make that pretty easily. So yes, it's raining more than I thought that it would rain, which had me a little concerned, but uh, it's just a steady constant rain. Normally I would say do not seed before a heavy rain. This is just a slow steady rain. We have a lot of wind because we're at the beach. But let me show you. Compare this to the front and what you're gonna see is, see all these weak areas all around the edges? It's just because there's a lot of shade. So that's why I'm doing this weird mix back here. You know, play around, have fun. Now, I will tell you that all I'm putting down, whoo, it's a lot of wind. All I'm putting down now for the next probably two months down here is just green chocker. I just come down and put a light coat of green chocker, bag rate, water it in, leave it. Come back the next week with a little green chocker. Do that for a couple weeks and uh, it'll be all set. Again, it's instead of having a slow release, I'm just spoon feeding it as it needs it. It's really cool. So if you don't have any green chocker, grab it, get it because you can use it on all your lawns. And we're really gonna be using it this spring, so make sure you have some on hand. So uh, I'll do a video on the fence, and I am doing, working on a video, take you guys fishing a little bit. Had some really cool fishing trips, a few other projects, a lot of wind and rain. I'm going inside. Talk to you later. Bye.